Hi guys, Andy here. Clove.co.uk were good enough to send me this uh, Blackberry Priv. Now, I've got to own up. I've never, ever owned a Blackberry before. Um, obviously, I'm an Android fan, and this is the first time Blackberry have ventured into the realms of Android devices. Um, so, you know, I know people talk about the wonders of a Blackberry keyboard, etc., etc. And then when this came out, there was quite a lot of... Uh, I don't know if I'd call it hype, but there was a lot of good word about the BlackBerry Priv, so I thought, Do you know, I want to give this device a go. And Clove were good enough to send me one to have a play with. Um, if we look at the sort of the design of the device, it's a 5.4-inch screen, uh, but it's actually quite a large body based just on a 5.4-inch screen. I mean, 5.4 inches is big, but you know, my note is, what, 5.7, and it's pretty much the same size. Um, it's quite a similar design to Samsung's Edge as well, for that matter. You see the sort of the rounded aspect of the screen. And they make use to an extent of that. When you plug it into charge, even when the screen's off, you get a little graphic along the edge showing you how much it's charged. It's 192 grams, so it's quite heavy, and it's 9.4 millimeters thick. So it's quite thick, um, but then obviously it's got the slidey keyboard. There's a little lip at the bottom when it's closed, making it nice and easy to slide open. And it's a decent mechanism, it's a good solid feel to it. Although the keys I found, I feel uh, f a little bit cramped when I'm trying to type on it. Now, there are, let's, uh, let's open something up, what have we got, Google Plus somewhere would be the easiest thing. So, so I can type on it. It just doesn't feel to me as quick and slick as uh, as on screen does these days, especially with the swipe type gesture inputs. Now, if I remember correctly, we can swipe left to delete a, a word away. In theory, if I double tap, I'm supposed to be able to... I've never worked this bit out. I did see in a different, oh, there we go, right, did you see that? So now I'm, I'm swiping, it's like a touchpad. Um, also, when you're, so if we come back out of posting, yeah, let's discard that. You can use the keyboard, again, like, kind of like a trackpad, which means you don't have to go touching on the screen. So that was, that was quite clever, it was quite, quite useful. I do, yeah, I, do, I used that a little bit. It's quite nice. Um, but overall, I just I just found the keyboard a little bit too cramped and pressing alt and then the numbers and shift and different letters. It was it wasn't uh, wasn't that great for for my experience. There is a front facing speaker on the left hand side there. So the grill goes all the way across just for kind of symmetry sake, I guess, because the speaker itself is over here on the left. It's not a bad speaker. It didn't score particularly well in my testing, but I, I never really found myself struggling to hear. You know, I listened to podcasts mainly, and I really struggled to hear what they were saying. It didn't pass the kettle test. I had to I had to pause them while the kettle was boiling. It's kind of a carbon fiber, almost almost rubbery feeling though back, um, which actually has a really good grip. Um, it it does have better grip than most devices you would try basically. Uh, grip definitely not an issue, but you do get funny tapping noises on different parts of the of the device. Now, this is a fairly common one that I have seen pointed out in other videos. You see how that's moving? For me, the bigger thing was, oh, has has tap to wake, which I did quite like. Now, when I press the back key, I don't know that you can hear that because the microphone is very directional. It's like a tapping noise. I don't really get it anywhere else. Well, not as noticeable. I'm just gonna bring it to the mic for a second. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it to me it just it 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 didn't make me think that it was that well built. If it's if it's kind of I don't know, I wouldn't call it loose, but it just something can't be right that it feels like the screen itself is moving when I'm tapping on it. Um, so yeah, a little bit odd. The hardware itself is a Snapdragon 808 
chipset. There's a dual core 1.8 gigahertz Cortex A57 and a quad core 1.44 gigahertz Cortex A53 CPUs. The GPU is an Adreno 418. It's got 32 gig of storage and 3 gig of RAM. It does have a micro, S, uh, micro SD card slot at the top, though. I think it can take up to like 200 gig. And it takes a nano SIM as well. The screen is 2560 by 1440 AMOLED screen. So the screen is very nice. Uh, 540 pixels per inch. And I think generally it's, it's one of the stronger aspects, actually. The screen, very nice, sort of vivid colors. It's very bright. I get it to sort of 715 lux on my, uh, with my light meter. And it's covered with Corning Gorilla Glass 4. The camera is 18 megapixel rear facing, only two megapixel front facing. It does have optical image stabilization. It can shoot 4K video um, on the back, but only 720p on the front. The software, let's see if we can see if we can show you. The software just feels quite slow, so it takes a little while to load up, and then a little while to actually take the picture when you tap. Um, the results, I guess I would say, are average. Um, the front-facing camera, pretty poor results, in fact. Almost embarrassing for what is a sort of top-end device in this day and age. Um, but, I mean, I don't know, maybe it depends. I guess it depends how important the camera is to you. To me, the camera is quite important. I'm a little disappointed by it. The software actually is very close to stock Android. So... Nexus owners will recognize most of how this looks. Um, a little bit different, so the widget's available there. Shortcuts, if you go to the app switcher, they're sort of set up like almost like Windows device tiles. Um, obviously it's got sort of BlackBerry security. Now, I'd heard about this Canadian security company that said it's not really as secure as the 5X or the 6P just because the software itself, the operating system, is old. So this is still running 5.1.1, um, and therefore, obviously, that's outdated. But I did have some someone sort of pointed out, well, this Canadian security company do make their own version of Android, so, yeah, generally they will bash other versions when they have an opportunity. Um, it does have a fairly decent security-level patch that's come in. And, uh, so Android security patch level... 1st of March. It's right now is the 12th of March. So I think I received that update yesterday, although I'd not had it turned on for three or four days. So uh, that's, that's pretty up to date, though, as far as security goes. Um, I quite like the swipe up from the bottom as like a quick launcher. And you can set whatever apps you want for those three. Although I haven't said that, I didn't particularly use it, but I think if this was my main device and I, <laughs> and I could remember to, then perhaps I would. You also get pop-up widgets. I'm not really sure I've got anything that's going to have a pop-up widget. But it basically meant that you could swipe on an app. No. You could swipe on an app and, and the widget itself would appear, but uh, I, and it's not really something I'm after, so I didn't particularly look at it much. I think, you might have, I, think I mentioned already, Double tap to wake, I do like very much. But not you don't have double tap to sleep, which is a little... If you can do it for one, you should do it for the other, really. Um, if you put it face down on your desk, it enters a sleep mode to save power. So I place it like so, and hopefully... There we go. Oh, yeah, so the screen was off, because it automatically kind of shuts things down. I didn't... I can't say that I really took any notice of if that helped or not. Um, but in theory, I'm, I'm, I read that it starts to uh, to save power. I quite like, although I'm not sure how much I'd use it, you get the different icons for the uh, notifications up here. So if you wanted to just see the icons from, I think that's BlackBerry Hub, or if I wanted to just see them from Inbox, you can you can select. So when you've got a lot of notifications, that's actually quite handy. Uh, so I quite like that. The battery was 3,410 milliamp hours, Li-ion battery. It has quick charge 2.0, I believe, but you don't get any kind of notification reassuring you that that's going on. Um, it's also listed at a lot of places as having Qi wireless charging, but mine didn't seem to work. And then as I looked into it, it's only the STV100-1 that does, and this is the ST100-4. Um, I've already mentioned the little sort of indicator charger along the edge when it's plugged in. 
Um, I did try, well, no, I had a look, sorry, on the XDA developers to see what options there might be for sort of installing different ROMs or hacking their device. It looks like there's none at all. So there's not even any threads on the XDA developers about sort of even slightly customized ROMs, which is, I think, a little bit of a shame. But again, perhaps BlackBerry users aren't that type of person and they're fine, they don't need different ROMs. Um, so all in all, I think the uh, the Bluetooth seemed a little bit weak for me as well. It often said it wasn't connected to my Android Wear watch. I've never really had it before as bad as the BlackBerry did. Every now and then a phone would say, oh, I'm not connected, tap here to connect, don't reconnect to the watch. But the BlackBerry seemed to spend most of its time disconnected and really struggled to connect. It crackled quite a lot with my headphones as well, the Bluetooth headphones. Um, I mean, that ha does happen with other devices, but again, it just seemed to be worse with the Priv, although I had no problems at all in the car, which is also using Bluetooth. Uh, the keyboard, for me, was just far too slow to use, but again, maybe some people are happier with the keyboard and they don't mind the slightly slower pace. The camera really wasn't what I expected from a top-end device, especially the front-facing camera. Um, eh, passable, perhaps, but I was hoping for, for better. I think then the odd sort of feel to it, the build quality of it, perhaps, or just the sort of weird... I don't like when a device creaks and groans when I press it in different places, uh, and unfortunately the Priv does a fair bit of that. All in all, maybe it's just for the die-hard BlackBerry fans that want a physical keyboard. Um, I don't know, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I have watched a couple of other video reviews of the Priv, and they were, you know, you watched Marcus Brownlee, um, and he wasn't massively blown away by it, um, and I would tend to agree. There are a few people sort of coming quite offended. I don't know if we have the sort of almost a Windows Phone phenomena where they get very loyal and don't like anything bad being said. So if you are a BlackBerry fan, I'm very sorry, but this is my honest opinion. That's what I always try and do, give my honest opinion. You're welcome to disagree. Um, and I'm sure you will in the comments down below. Please let me know your thoughts. But uh, once again, thank you to clove.co.uk for allowing me to borrow the device to give it a test. My name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.